Hi everybody, welcome to Sulphur Christian Church. I'm Pastor Jeff, so glad that you're here on this beautiful yeah. Sunday morning and uh, just happy to see you all. A uh, couple of announcements this morning I wanted to uh, get started with before we, we sing a couple of great hymns of our faith. We're going to start out with that. But um, I want everybody to, to know this is our last hurrah for the food raiser for the Henry County Health Center uh, today. And then um, I'm going to be here Wednesday afternoon and night. as actually September 1st, but I will be here and uh, I'm going to broadcast Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff from here at church. And then I'm going to load everything up in the car. So uh, Wednesday night is your last opportunity. So when you um, get some stuff, you can bring it between now and Wednesday night. Uh, if you want to come hang out with me Wednesday for uh, Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff and bring more non-perishable food items in for the Henry County Health Center, that would be fantastic. I'll be here that night. Uh, to, to collect so if you want to bring stuff on Wednesday night that would be great um, also uh, it's exciting news to me um, September 19th which is a Sunday for morning worship we're going to have a very special guest Christian Davis is going to be here on Sunday uh, September 19th for those of you who were here uh, and saw him last August out at the pavilion. Uh, no, this guy, he's not just your average singer, okay? He has sang at the Grand Ole Opry. He has sang at Carnegie Hall. He sang for bass for years with uh, Vincent and Daly, you might be familiar with. And he's very, very good. He is a true professional. And you'll want to be here. You want to be here for Christian Davis. Yes, yeah, so uh, he's incredibly good, and uh, don't miss it. So put that on your calendar, September 19th, to be here uh, for a very special worship service with Christian Davis. Uh, any other announcements, Miss Kathy? I put the sign-up sheets back here for the packing for the 2122 school year. Our first night to pack is September the 8th, which is not this week, next week. Next week. A week from Wednesday. So, um, anyway, it's back here. You know, it's going down. Yeah, so sign up, sign up to help with the backpack ministry in Campbellsburg. Just takes a few minutes of your time, uh, but it is a very, very important ministry that we're a part of. So, uh, make sure that you are. Uh, uh, get involved in that so sign up back there and let's not have the same three or four people do it all the time let's let's get uh, more people involved you just drive up to the train they it, it's very simple so somebody will help you do everything if you've never been go with somebody who has done it before they can show you in a few minutes how how to do that you get them done and you know you've done something good when you're pulling out of the parking lot there so. Yeah, less than a half hour, about 20, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how many kids and how much stuff. But um, we'd love for uh, everyone to be involved uh, with that, if at all possible. And with that being said, also, when you're out shopping for Henry County Health Center, uh, grab little single-serve quick items that can go in the backpacks. Those can also come to the church, and we'll gather those, and we'll make sure those get to Campbellsburg. Uh, for the kids. All right. Miss Mitch? I think we have a list back here of what our church is responsible for if everybody could just pick up one of those little lists. Yeah, grab one of the lists back there for the for the backpack ministry and you can see uh, uh, what we, uh, specifically our church, is responsible for. You can grab anything, but that that's specifically what we kind of focus on here. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we're so glad you're here with us today. We love you, Jesus. We, uh, we're just so thankful that we get to be involved in the things that we're involved in, that we get to reach out from here in Sulphur, Kentucky. We even get to reach out globally, locally, nationally to help 
uh, with Damu Mission in Haiti affected so dramatically by the, the, the last earthquake they had. And Lord, the, the shoe boxes, the backpack ministry here in Henry County, the Henry County Health Center, Waterstep, who is reaching people with clean water all over the earth, Lord Jesus. We're just so thankful that you use us internationally, even from right here in Sulphur, Kentucky, Lord Jesus. And right outside of our front door and back door, we help people. So we're just so thankful. And Lord Jesus, we come together as a body today, as your hands and feet, to praise you and to worship you and to thank you for all that you do. You're so precious and we love you so much, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Begin again. <laughs> Whoa. Time out. Redo. Try to, 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 to do that. Hey, now 71. Number 71. We're going to sing this through twice. That was just We're going to try to sing this through twice. We can sing both at the same time. <laughs> yes. Oh, there we go. It's a medley. It's a medley.
will turn to 197, Blessed Assurance. We'll sing all three verses. assurance do we have uh, praises I know there's a lot of prayer requests it's been a very difficult week for a lot of people I know uh, the Ira Loudon family the uh, the Timmy Gibbeton family of course uh, all suffered losses this week we need to keep them their family friends People affected by that in uh, in our prayer lives for for their families. Uh, lots of people affected by COVID right now. I know um, we had seen uh, we've been praying for Amanda, but Amanda's mother, somebody I saw uh, her aunt, her aunt, aunt, her aunt uh, has pneumonia and COVID in the hospital there's several of those i think that we need to keep on our prayer list um lots of people affected by covid lately and uh, keep them and your prayers of course our our troops and our folks still on the ground in afghanistan and other places uh in our world uh, keep them uh the family of the families and friends and fellow soldiers of the 13 killed at Kabul airport uh, this past week. You know, you take 13 different people from 13 different places and the number of people affected by that is incredible. You know, and I saw a picture this morning of 13 American flag draped caskets in an airplane in a C-130 
this morning and it just it's really hard you know I know for some people that they can blank out and cross out the emotional effects of that but I'm sorry I've never been able to do that it's always affected me emotionally especially with soldiers and uh, and things like that so please keep them um, uh, in your prayers do we have other requests praise this Ernie yeah it's it's going to be ugly it already is ugly and um, I, I don't want to get into politics but uh, sometimes it seems like uh, you know swoop in to be the hero but then you leave people to the wolves and that's exactly what's happening so uh, again I don't want to get into politics but it it's not about politics it's about people so yes keep keep those that are going to stay in Afghanistan in your prayers Miss Pam I, I, I know I put this on our, our church page but his family is Bob Webb Bob Webb, yes. And uh, Beth, Beth Webb Brown, his daughter, yes. uh, is dealing with uh, breast cancer. So, this, uh, I don't think it ever happens at a good time, but this is a terrible time for Beth to have to undergo that emotional trauma. Yes. Yes. She had lung cancer. Yes. And she is having her chemo treatments and her radiation treatments at the same time. So her chemo is like twice a week and her radiation, or radiation is every day and her chemo is once a week or something. Yes. Like anyway, both at the same time. And I don't know how people don't get through that part. <laughs> yeah, we've seen the effects of that firsthand in our family. Continue to keep Smitty and Jerry on on your prayer list as well. Rosemary? Um, I have a praise. Uh, our son-in-law, Kyle Samples, they did biopsies multiple in his spine, lymph nodes, and aorta. They were all benign. So now... Answer we, prayer. Yeah. Now they're looking at... Um, it's a disease they believe called Schlullerman's disease that causes tumors on the end of nerves. They have not ruled out cancer of the brain, so just continue praying. Continue but prayer for when she called me, I cried so hard with joy. Yes. When she said all his tests came back benign. I just, yeah. what a praise. Yeah. Bob? Ruth Brady will be having her surgery Thursday. Yeah, Ruth Brady's surgery is Thursday, so keep her. She's watching. No, Love you, Ruth. We'll, we'll be praying for you as you uh, uh, have that surgery and recover from it. Miss sure. Tina Smith. An unexpected job popped in my lap two weeks ago. Love it. Good. All right. Ready for a new adventure. If you have dirty teeth, go see <laughs> Tina. If you got dirty teeth, we know where to go. All right. <laughs> That's right. Very good. Paula? Uh, we have had three nurses in the last two weeks pass away from COVID. Uh, two wow. North Carolina, one in Tennessee. Oh. So with, associated with Miss Paula's work, two nurses that work within the jail system and correctionals uh, have passed away from COVID. So... It is sweeping. We need to keep people in prayers, and we need to be try to be safe and and smart uh, when we're out and about. Um, any other praises or prayer requests this morning? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much. We love you so much. Now, Father God, Lord Jesus, you've heard these prayers and you've heard these praises and you've heard these requests and I know that there's so many more, but Father God, I'm so thankful you're God and that you know. 
that even if we don't speak them, even if we don't remember them, or even if we don't want to speak them and it's just between us and you, that you're okay with that and you know. And we're so thankful that that's the kind of God that we serve, one that cares, the one that knows. Lord Jesus, we pray for everyone in Afghanistan, our soldiers, the support crew that's there. Lord Jesus, even uh, reporters and, and um, the people there working on diplomacy, Father God. Lord Jesus, we pray for the Afghan people. We pray for protection and help for them, Lord Jesus. And we pray <laughs> against the Taliban and what they do. Lord Jesus, and Father God, it is not of you. It is not of you. This is not uh, God Jehovah in action at all, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we just pray that hearts would be turned. And Father God, Lord Jesus, um, that even revival could come to a place like Afghanistan. And Lord Jesus, that your spirit would be, be so thick and overwhelming that even the enemies of you and your kingdom would just fall on their knees in repentance, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray for uh, Marion and Ira Loudon's respective families, Lord Jesus. And Father God, the different things going on there, the, the grief and the loss with Ira's family and Lord Jesus, the continued uh, treatment and help for Marion and Lord Jesus Father God we just pray for them we pray for the Jividen family Father God what a long hard battle that was and it's emotionally and physically draining on friends and family and Father God we pray for comfort peace for that family and for the friends affected by that Lord Jesus Lord, we pray for the families, friends, and loved ones of the 13 uh, um, service members killed at the airport the other day in Kabul. And Lord Jesus, we pray for Beth Webb Brown. Yeah, what a difficult time, any time, to deal with cancer, but Lord Jesus, particularly in this time. Lord Jesus, we just pray comfort and peace over her and all of the Bob Webb family, Lord Jesus. Father God, be with them. Be with the families, friends, and loved ones of the two nurses that have passed away, Father God, due to COVID, and all the people affected by untimely deaths, Lord Jesus, and uh, through disease and different things. Father God, Lord Jesus, we just pray for them. We pray for families, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray for our country and our world. Lord Jesus, we just pray that somehow, some way, we would be able to administer help and love wherever we go. Father God, that we'd be able to represent your kingdom well with whatever we're doing. And mostly that we would just love people. Help us, Lord Jesus. Change in us what needs to change in order for us to be a more loving people, to be more like Jesus and less like us. Father God, we love you so much. Father God, we thank you that you came. You walked on this planet. You felt the feelings that we have felt. You've experienced the things that we've experienced and far more. And yet you still love us. You still forgive us. No matter how many times we fall, no matter how many times we fail, you haven't failed us yet. You are faithful, true and true, always, Father God. This faithfulness came through your own death, your own sacrifice, that you went to the cross. You died a sinner's death, yet you had no sin. For us, you took it for us. You went in our place, Father God, so that we have blessed assurance. We're so thankful, Father God, for that. So as we come to your table today with a little cup, a little wafer, help us to remember how your body was broken in our place, in our stead, and that your blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins 
and for the sins of many. So Father God, we just thank you as we commune with you. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Barbara. So last week, as you may remember, we started a series talking about our assurances, blessed assurance. Last week, we started being certain of our salvation. If, if there's anything we need and should be certain of in this life is that our salvation from through Jesus Christ from God is pure, is real, and is eternal. We need to remember that. If you will, turn with me to Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, 37 through 39. Well, these two, these two uh, scriptures that we'll, we'll read each week during this series are very important for us to remember because they help us to have the confidence that when we have been saved by Jesus Christ, we are saved, truly safe. Now, it doesn't give us the... the license to do anything we want but it does give us a guarantee of our future Romans 8 beginning with verse 37 no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I am convinced hear that I am convinced this needs to be our thought process when we think about our salvation I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us, to separate me, to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Nothing can separate us. Now, if you'll flip on over to 1 John 5, 1 John chapter 5, beginning with verse 13, we're going to look at our other scripture uh, lesson for this sermon series. 1 John 5, 13. 
I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. Knowing, confidence, knowing these things are so important for our faith. So what in this life can we be sure of? What assurances do we have? What assurances do we have that we can hold on to and look forward to our future with? And really, I asked these same questions last week. How sure are you that you even really know Jesus? How sure are you that you are truly saved? How sure are you that God is real and that he loves you? How sure are you that you are assured a heavenly home that Jesus Christ himself has gone on before you to create for you? Well, that's why we come here, right? That's why we come here. That's why we come to his word. We're going to take a close look at these assurances that we have with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So last week we learned about some of these assurances, didn't we? So we learn in, in scripture through God's holy word. You know, we, we compile the list, but this list came from the word of God, not from Jeff's mind or, or books or, or theology. It all came from the word of God. Directly from the word of God, we have these assurances that one, our call and election from God is assured. We are all called to come to Christ. Every one of us in the world, everyone born, ever born, will have a call and election from God. Number two, we are all assured that we have God's abiding love. Number three, God assures us that we are his children. Over and over in God's word, he refers to us as his children. Four, being able to see the living, ascending, ascended God is assured to us. We will see God. We will. We will see God. That is a guarantee. Number five, on receiving a crown of righteousness, we are assured. Yes, if we say, yes, Lord Jesus, save me, we receive a crown of righteousness. That's what the Bible says. Number six, on having eternal life, you are assured. You are assured eternal life, and you simply have to believe in him. So today I want to speak to about how we can obtain these assurances. The second scripture of our sermon series here, 1 John 5, 13, 15, is telling us that if we believe in the name of Jesus, if we believe in the Son of God, we can know that we can be confident that we have eternal life. We can know it, right? Right? There are things that we know we have in this life, right? We know there are certain things that we have. And there are things we're pretty sure we may never have in this life. But one of the things we can be assured of is that we can be guaranteed God's promise of eternal life. We can't, we won't, and we don't always get things right. In fact, if you look at things, we rarely do get or won't do things right. But if we can just believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as imperfect as we are, as skewed and messed up as we are, we're guaranteed eternal life. Isn't that good news? Isn't that great to know? 
even as messed up as our lives have been, you know, and some people never admit that they have a messed up life, but we all fall short of the glory of God, except by his grace, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, and his ability to make us right, to give us those crowns of righteousness is enough to take us out of who we've been and what we've done right into glory someday. And that's the good news for us. We can rest assured on our belief in the name of Jesus, but we can also obtain these insurances, these assurances, by accepting God's promises to us. We need to accept his promises. John 3.16, you know John 3.16, right? Doesn't John 3.16 plainly tell us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believed in him would have eternal life and not perish? Isn't that what it says? Isn't that an assurance? Isn't that a promise that if we believe in Jesus, we will have eternal life? It doesn't say may, might, could be, it says we will have eternal life. For God so loved us that he gave us his one and only son that we can believe in him and not perish but have eternal life. You see, eternal life for us is a promise of God. And it's a promise of God to each and every one of us. And you know, sometimes that's really, really hard for us to understand. And it's really, really hard for us to accept because, you know, we, we tend to be mountain and valley peoples, right? We need to, well, boy, when we're up on that mountain and everything's going great and we're feeling all blessed and like everything is stupendous and wonderful and great, isn't it easier feel like you can praise God and oh hallelujah, hallelujah, happy, happy, joy, joy. But when you're in that valley and when you're in the very pit, we should be praising him just as loudly. The hallelujah should be on our lips just as much. Why? Because our victory is already won. Regardless of what happens in your day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year life, even though there is disease, illnesses, injuries, even death, if we trust in this word, if we trust in him, the victory is already won. That's important for us to remember. He makes it clear that if we have the simple belief that he is real, then he promises that we'll be with him in glory forever and ever and ever. Accepting his promises is accepting these assurances. That's really important for us to remember. John 6, 40 John 6, 40 also says this, for my Father's will is that everyone, is that everyone looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. These words in red in your Holy Bible are promises. And it's the promise that Jesus is the way to heaven. Jesus is the way to heaven. He's the truth. He's the way and he's the life. We can rest assured that he and he alone is the guarantor of the promises of God for us. For us Gentiles, that's absolutely 100% true. Our guarantor for eternal life is through and in Jesus Christ. He alone can save. Remember, anybody ever had anybody co-sign on a loan for you? Anybody ever done that? Yeah. 
especially when you were young. You, you know, most of us, mom and dad, I remember my first car loan was for $1,300, and dad co-signed on it for me, and I went to work at the uh, convenience store there in Whitesburg, Kentucky, the big metropolis down there, and, uh, and dad said, okay, I want to get your car, you're 16, you've been a good kid, we're going to get you a car, but you're going to pay for it. I'm going to help you out. So he signed, co-signed on the loan for me. So you know what a, what a co-signer really is? A guarantor, right? A guarantor makes sure that if for some reason you don't get everything right and you kind of fail, then what happens? The guarantor steps up for you and takes care of everything for you, right? Isn't that exactly what Jesus does for us? Isn't that exactly what he does for us for our entire life and even beyond our life? He alone can save. You can rest assured in that. Now, right before our series scripture, John, 1 John 5, 13, which we've read a couple of weeks in a row and we'll continue to read as our, our sermon series scripture, Right before 1 John 5, 13 is 1 John 5, 11, 11 and 12. So this goes back a couple of verses before, before our focus scripture, and it states this. <laughs> and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son Jesus. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life, does not have eternal life. So you see, believe in him today. Believe. Believe in him today and you can be assured that you are a citizen of heaven. It's guaranteed. The guarantor is assures all of heaven and all of creation that you will walk the streets of gold. Amen. He promises and all of his promises are true about eternal life. 100% true. So how can we be assured of this? That his promises are true. They sound pretty miraculous. They sound pretty far-fetched they sound like some pretty big promises we, we all in this all everyone in this room everyone watching everyone listening has made promises bigger than we could ever possibly fulfill but we're not God every single promise of God that he has ever made that has every already happened Every previous promise God has ever made has been fulfilled. Every single one. Don't believe me? Go to the Old Testament and read every prophecy about Jesus, every prophecy about mankind, every prophecy about culture, every, pro every pro uh, prophecy about uh what's going to happen and what's going to go on and you will find that every single promise every single one in the old testament has come to pass with 100 percent accuracy there is no one nothing anywhere else in history that can validate that kind of claim except jesus christ he's the only one it's the only one. The accuracy is unblemished. God has a perfect track record in keeping his promises. And that's proven in his word in the witness of his people. Yet yeah, have you ever said or thought, if God can save me, he can save anyone. You ever had that thought? You ever said that? If he can save me, he can save anyone. You see, we can bear witness that 
we have already studied, one of our assurances is that God's call and election for us, it, we are assured. So we are also assured that no matter what we've done, no matter who we are, no matter what sins we have committed, we have been made worthy of our election and our call by God. On what is our assurances founded? Well, first of all, listen to this. This is really important for us to remember and, and keep in context and, and keep focus on. Our assurance of God's promises is founded on the fact that he chose us first. God chose you first. He chose you before you said, okay, I'll follow you. He had already chosen you. He chose you first. Listen to Ephesians 1, 4 through 8. Listen to this. You're going to like this. This is good stuff for all of us. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves, in him <coughs> we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. That's powerful. Don't you ever, ever let yourself, the world, another person, or the demons of hell or Satan convince you that you're not good enough. Don't allow that. We need to have confidence that he has chosen us <coughs> and he has made us worthy. Just remember this though. The devil doesn't want you to look at yourself like the way that God does. The devil want, doesn't want you to look at yourself the way that God does. He doesn't want that. <coughs> God looks at you and he sees who he created you to be. He doesn't see what we have been deceived into thinking that we are. We've been deceived into thinking that we are <coughs> helpless and hopeless. Are we sinners? Do we mess up? Yes. But that will never stop him from loving you. He promises us that he chooses to see us as holy and blameless. Think about that. Think about some of the things you've done. Think about some of the things you've said. Think about some of the things you have thought. And yet, when God looks at you, he sees you. You may not feel holy. You may not feel blameless. But the beautiful thing about God is that, is that how he sees you? Because that's how deep his love is. That he sees you as holy and blameless. God knows you. No, I'm not saying just that simply. God really knows you. He really knows you and he really loves you. He loves you enough that he knows everything about you and chooses to love you deeper and greater than anybody else anyway. No matter what we've done, no matter how we've struggled, he still loves you deeply. Once again, here we're assured of God's abiding love. It's all good news. 
Do bad things happen? Yes. Do bad things happen to good people? Yes. But that doesn't invalidate any of the promises of God. Not even one. I held my daddy's hand when he died. It hurt deeply. But as he drew his last breath and we knew he was going, he started to sit up in the bed. He hadn't opened his eyes for days. He sat up in the bed and he put his arms up and his eyes opened to the heavens. I was assured. You talking about blessed, blessed assurance? I knew. I knew at that moment more than I'd ever known in my whole life. I needed assurance. My daddy was being taken care of by the creator of the universe and I knew it and I know it. So next Sunday we're going to continue our exploration of God's word about how we can be assured of our salvation. So next week, be prepared. Hopefully, if you question your own salvation, and you know, that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to question our own salvation. Hopefully, if you question your own salvation, this will help you to see its reality, its validity. The assurance that you can have that Jesus chooses you. He has chosen you and he still chooses you. The real you. The you that he created. Not the you that you've tried to create. Tried to create success. Tried to create acceptance. Tried to create all these things. These masks that we wear. These things that we do to try to show people how fantastic and great we are. God sees through all that. He sees the real you. He knows the real you. He created you. You can't shock or surprise or even fool him. The you that he alone can shape and reshape into who he wants you to be. Yes, God can reshape you each day into something more and more of what he wants you to be. We will look further next week into how God keeps us safe. How God keeps us safe and how powerful his love is. That's what we're going to look at next week. So that there, there's your teaser for next week. We're going to look at how he keeps us safe and how powerful his love is next week. So be prepared for that. So pray about that. Maybe even look in your Bible a little bit about that this week in preparation for week number three of Blessed Assurance. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we, we need to accept your promises and fully accept your assurances. Father God, Lord Jesus, we need to get to where we are confident in our faith assured in our salvation convinced that your promises are true Father God because the war is raging but it's going to get worse that is promised the persecution of your people will intensify and guess where that's going to come from? Things like the Taliban. Non-believers. So Father God, Lord Jesus, help us to armor up. Help us to strengthen our minds, hearts, and spirits and our emotions with your word, with your promises, with your truths, with your assurances, Father God. Lord Jesus, thank you for these lessons that you teach us. Help us to digest them. It'll help them to make our bodies, our minds, our spirits stronger, more in tune with you. And Father God, that 
some of those chinks in our armor close up and make us even more powerful, Lord Jesus. That we'll pick up our Bibles. There are swords. There are offensive weapons, Father God. Our shield of faith. Our entire full body armor that you give us. Lord Jesus, help us. Lead us, guide us, be with everybody on our prayer list, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray that, that people might be moved to bring a lot of food here to the church for the help center in the next few days. Then let's take this food raiser uh, to a whole new level, Lord Jesus, before Wednesday night, Father God. And that It will take even more than one trip to take everything over. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you in your holy amazing, wonderful, incredible name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all, and I'll see you all real, real soon.